Hello, thank you for joining us on our ACE Durant Safety Call today. Uh, with me today is Jason O'Brien, our hours of service manager, and we also have Jeff Roach, our uh, director of agents out there in Owensboro. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dale. I'd like to thank all the drivers who are joining us today, too. Um, I really appreciate you getting online with us and going over some uh, safety issues. Uh, first off, I would like to talk about our safety goals for this year in 2018. Our goals are to have a 25% reduction on claims, both that's cargo and accident. We are also looking at a 50% reduction on our unsafe violations. And then lastly, we want to drop our CSA alerts in vehicle maintenance and hours of service. With that being said, I'd like to go over our scores here for the last period that uh, was the end of January. On the ACE BME side, our unsafe driving score now stands at 64%. That was a 6% increase over the previous month. Hours of service was no change at 69%. We're still over the threshold by four percentage points. Vehicle maintenance was a 2% increase. It moved up to 84%. Uh, driver fitness was at zero. It moved up to 8%. We did have a violation there with one of our drivers on a stop. He had uh, two licenses, and obviously you cannot have that. Crash, no change. It stood at 64%. On our... Uh, Government secure side uh, win, those scores are as follows. Unsafe is at 1%, no change. That's a great job, everybody. Hours of service went up two percentage points. It now stands at 40. Our vehicle maintenance uh, increased 4% to 30%. Driver fitness is at zero, no change. And our crash basic moved up three percentage points to four. Uh, just to remind everybody, we will be taking questions at the end of the meeting, so please hit star three. Uh, first two callers who call in, I do have gift certificates for you, either at the question or a good safety tip. Uh, moving on to our claims, we are doing okay in claims. Our, our year to date, we have 73,000 $76.89 worth of claims. That's 8% uh, ahead of goal. So we're doing all right. The areas that we're seeing losses are in um, backing. We've had two events where we've either backed into another tractor and damaged it or backing into a building. Those two claims combined is uh, almost $14,000 worth of claims. The other area that we've seen on the cargo side are uh, tarping. Let's make sure we're keeping the uh, cargo dry. We've had some wet, wet claims that have totaled up to um, looks like over $20,000 so far. So let's make sure we're tarping properly and we can reduce those type of claims. Um, what I'd like to do next is I'd like to recognize the drivers who've had clean inspections during the last reporting period. So David Earhart, Herberio Rodriguez, Amando Rivero, Brandon Bellamy, Stephen Stillwagon, Daniel Telefor, Hubert Spencer, Wayne Finstadt, Larry Price, and Diana Robinson. I appreciate the good job you guys are doing. Keep on getting those clean inspections. Now, our CSA period just ended uh, last Friday, so those scores for the period of February should be available this Saturday or Monday at the latest. Uh, once those scores are available, we will communicate them out. Uh, obviously, we hope that our CSA score on the unsafe um, backs away from almost being over the threshold. We'll know uh, when it reports out. We brought in as many unsafes as that we had falling off, so we'll have to see how the competition does to see if we're under or over the threshold. On the safety meeting side, I would like to thank everyone who uh, – made it to the last week's safety meetings in Knoxville and Morton. Appreciate your support. Uh, prior to that, I had some safety meetings in uh, Wisconsin, Iowa. Good to see all you guys come out. I would like to mention there are some upcoming safety meetings. We have them coming up in um, Trinity, Texas. Uh, we have one in Owensboro. We have 
the Cleveland and Louisville. If you don't plan on making any in-person meetings, I would suggest that you go to Drivers IG and do the one online. The online one's less than 20 minutes. There's five questions you'll be asked through the video itself. Just respond to them, and you'll get credit to that. We're down to about 30 days left of this quarter, and we've only had about 110 drivers take an in-person or online meeting to this point, and there's roughly 315 drivers, so we still have quite a few to go. I would encourage you doing it now, and don't wait until the last day or two to try to get taken care of then. Um, Jason, if you would like to talk a little bit about logs, I had noticed this last week we had a violation with one of our drivers where his tablet wasn't mounted on the dash, and he was given a violation for that. Yes, Dale, that's correct. Uh, thanks for having me on the call, and, and we can definitely talk about that. Um, again, if you have any questions at star three or any safety tips, please let us know by hitting star three, and uh, we'll go from there. So we did have – actually, there's been a total of uh, three drivers for Bennett that have gotten uh, violations for not having – Two of the drivers got it for not having the phone mounted or tablet mounted that they use for their e-log device, and the other driver got it for not having the box mounted. Um, they just had it kind of laying behind their seat in the truck. Um, it does need to be at least Velcroed or attached to something. It can't just be uh, kind of laying loose or flopping around back there. It does have to be secured. Um, I did also want to talk about personal conveyance um, and how that is for short en route stops uh, and or lodging. Uh, you can't use it to extend your day. And once you get to your 14 hours, that's kind of the end of that. Um, you wouldn't be able to continue in personal conveyance. Um, you wouldn't be able to also position yourself closer to your next dispatch. We've seen where a driver would be off-duty essentially all day, uh, have off-duty driving being personal conveyance for four hours, going to where they needed to be like on a Monday morning, uh, and they were driving on a Sunday. And then one other thing uh, with logs. Uh, that we're kind of seeing right now, especially with our wind division, but it can happen on the freight side as well, uh, is if you're going to have more than eight days of off-duty time, it's important to go to the Rand McNally website. It's connect.randmcnally.com. You log in with your driver ID for your username and password, and then you type in our company code, which is BGME-PROD. Uh, once you get logged in there, there's a certify and edit button, and there's a schedule button. If it's a past log, you uh, would just select the certify and edit, and you can certify and edit past days. If you need to schedule your off-duty time, you can do it in larger chunks. So you could do like a week or a month at a time, and that would help uh, get that taken care of easier for you instead of having to do it each day, uh, which is kind of how it is when you do it retroactively. And that's kind of the things that I did want to mention here about logs. Um, I had one of our drivers this weekend, Jason, ask me about getting logs for tax purposes. He's on an ELD. Uh, what do they need to do to make sure they get those? Uh, well, that's a great question. Um, with uh, getting your logs for the past six months, they are also available at connect.ramcnally.com when you get logged in there. Um, or for that, you can also call me, and I can send you out a PDF version and an email for your last six months as well. It's important to, to do that maybe – quarterly, um, but at least semi-annually. Once six months is gone, then those logs are gone, and we don't have those records anymore. Uh, so it is important to do that uh, maybe, like I said, quarterly. Once every three months, you'll definitely have them, or, or at least semi-annually, um, so you can have those records for your taxes. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the gentleman I spoke with, I know he didn't get them, so those you know, logs are gone. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, you, you're talking about personal conveyance. Um, I remember when this um, when we went into ELDs and it went national with the regulations there in mid-December, uh, one of our drivers ran out of time, and he just slipped to personal conveyance and got stopped for that. Obviously, if your time runs out, you can't use personal conveyance to get off the road. You're in violation, and that's, you know, the only way that you can deal with it. You can't flip over, correct? Right, that's correct. Um, it, it doesn't. It kind of doesn't make sense in, in that situation because you're already going to be in violation. Yep. You're just now creating a false log as well, um, so you're just compounding the problem. Now you have two things that, that are, have gone wrong, so to say. Um, so yeah, you, you don't ever want to do that. If you, for some reason, do need to try to find a safe place to park or whatever it is, it's better just to go into violation and then kind of cross your fingers that we won't get a DOT in the next seven days while that's part of your log. Um, well, of course. You know, give you a call and coach on that and 
try to tell you, uh, you know, maybe different ways to try to avoid that happening in the future. Um, but, yeah, you don't want to go ahead and get two violations when you've already got one. Right. You don't want to compound that problem. But the false log is worse than just a violation log because then That's it looks good. like you're you're manipulating the data or trying to mask it and hide it. That's very true. Yep. So, all right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, joining us next is uh, Jeff Roach. He's here to talk to us about Camp Bennett. Jeff, how are you doing? Doing very well, Dale. Thank you, guys. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to take this time to first thank each of you for your hard work and dedication to doing your job safely and also representing our company in the professional manner that you do. Today I want to bring to your attention an awesome opportunity for your relatives that are in the age group between 12 and 18 years old. The Taylor Foundation has has partnered with Camp Anderson in Old Town, Florida to give the children a great week of fun and fellowship. Camp Anderson becomes Camp Bennett for this week, which is also, that time is July the 9th, is, will be the opening and it will close out on that Friday, July the 13th. They are a Christian-based camp with a core value of reaching the unreached of the next generation. Each day is filled with activities that your child can choose along with free time each day for other activities. I'll give you a, just a normal day's schedule would be from 8 to 9 in the morning they would get up and have breakfast. 9 to 9.30 they're back to their cabin for a time to visit with each other and have a uh, short devotional time. 9.30 to 10.30 they have a morning assembly in the pavilion. They'll have singing and different things there and then they'll break out to their activities that they have chosen for the week. Some of these activities that they can choose are paintball, kayaking, riverboat, archery, and marksmanship, guitar, cupcakes, beauty secrets, crafts, and then the pool and snuba, fishing, and dance. After lunch is from uh, 12.30 to 1.30, and after that they have free time for about three and a half hours. And at this time they're able to do tubing, they can play basketball, they can go to the pool, which is all open. It's just a great time for them. And then they have, after dinner at night, they also have a uh, time of worship there where a youth band is playing. It's all upbeat. They will have a uh, the camp minister there. He preaches to them and gives it, and he speaks in in their type of language. He reaches them in a place to where they can be reached at. I was just there last year, and I'm so excited about this by seeing it firsthand. Guys, I'm telling you, this is something that can change lives. Last year on the Friday, that's when they always do a baptism of anybody that has uh, accepted Christ and decides that's what they want to do is be baptized here. We baptized 41 kids last year in the Swanee River there, and Miss Taylor was there for all of those. She is very proud of what this camp does and backs it. Guys, I'm telling you, this is a wonderful opportunity for you at no cost. I'll be leaving up in Cincinnati on the Sunday prior to Monday the 9th. I'll pick up kids there, and then if anybody's en route, I'll pick them up on the way, and then I'll return your children back on that Sunday night, or excuse me, on that Friday night. So reach out to me if you're interested in this or if you need more details on it. My cell phone number is 270-316-1723. I can put you in touch with uh, how to get registered, and I'll walk you through that, and we'll make sure that everything's done right. It's, uh, they do have an open canteen if kids want to spend a little extra money. They have snacks, but it's a good way to put a 10 or 15 bucks in there and they can pick up extra Cokes or anything like that during the course of the week that they may want. But if you uh, would like to know more details on it, if you would just Google Camp Anderson in Old Town, Florida, you can pull it up and they have all kinds of details on it. In the week of July the 9th through the 13th, it'll be Camp Bennett. We'll have T-shirts and there'll be things there. It's just... Uh, it's a real neat thing that the Taylor Foundation has provided for us. Again, this will be July the 9th through the 13th, and just reach out to me, Jeff Roach, and I'll be glad to help you with this and give you any more details. Cell phone number one more time is 270-316-1723. Everyone, thank you very much for taking the time to be on this call today, and you all have a blessed day. Dell, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jeff. We really appreciate you doing that for us. I know last year you got here and you picked everyone up and drove them down there. I know that's a lot of work on your part, but we really appreciate your effort on that. All right. Um, I forgot I forgot to give an update on how we're doing on our unsafe uh, driving so far. Uh, with our goal of being a 50% reduction every month, 
we have um, basically one and a half unsafe violations per month. So through the month of February, we should only have three. Unfortunately, we picked up one yesterday um, as another failure to obey. That gives us four for the year, so we are over in our total. Uh, we really need to go the whole month of March without picking up any additional ones to stay on track of our goal of no more than 18 for the year. I do want to remind everybody, star three for questions. We'll be taking questions here in about two or three minutes. Looks like we have one question so far in the queue, but please star three now. Um, either question or safety tip. Uh, we're looking for either or. Um, I do want to mention our zero unsafe tolerance offenses. Unfortunately, yesterday we had a stop in which one of our individuals had a, a narcotic on the dr on the truck. That's obviously not tolerated. Um, so I'm just going to go through those, everyone, so they remind and they, or excuse me, everyone remind everyone of those offenses. So failure to use a seatbelt, speeding 11 or over, speeding in a construction or school zone, texting or using a handheld, unauthorized passengers, causing a rear-end collision, any alcohol-related or narcotic offense, loss of control accidents, rollover accidents, overhead bridge strikes, and failure to report accidents. Um, all of these offenses are either high CSA point totals or they're very expensive accidents for us. So um, just be mindful of that and make sure you're driving safe at all times and using good driving habits. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to take a couple of questions now. Uh, first up, it looks like Denny Terry has a question about e-logs. Denny? Hello, Denny? Yeah. Danny, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Danny. How are you today? Okay, I'm okay. I got unloaded in California safely, so we're okay. That's good. I see you had a question about uh, uh, ELDs. Yeah. You said that the tablet had to be mounted on the... Where do I get that mounting bracket at? You want to go ahead, Jim? Yeah, hey, Danny, this is Jason. Um, you can get uh, mounting hardware for that either online, of course, which is always an answer nowadays, or even truck stops have tablet mounts that can uh, put it up on your dash there so you're able to see it while you're driving. Um, that's kind of the reasoning behind it is um, that, you know, if you need to see how much time you have left, it's within your eyesight so you know how much time at any time uh, before you need to take a break, and that's why they want to mount it up there. But you can get those okay. at a truck stop or, or online, of course. Yeah. Didn't you say even you could do like a Velcro contraption for what the tablet or for the box? Well, for the box, um, you can you know just Velcro it to something. Um, Home Depot, of course, has Velcro that would hold uh, some pretty heavy items. And not that the box is heavy, but it's pretty pretty strong Velcro. Um, so I'd always you know just recommend something like that for the box. Uh, it can kind of be anywhere uh, for that, but it, you just can't have it laying loose like behind the seat or somewhere else. Good tip. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Danny. All right. Next on the line, it looks like we have uh, Dennis Persinger. Dennis, how are you? Good, good. What's your safety tip for us? Well, it's 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 springtime coming here, and I want drivers to be aware that there's going to be more motorcycles on the road today. That is coming true. up this spring here, and uh, to be aware, you know, when you're take a double look in your mirrors because sometimes you just can't see them, you know. Yeah, we're at that time of the year where it's still a little winter weather in some places and spring and elsewhere, though. But you, you're right. Depending on where you're going, you need to be mindful of motorcycles. Um, definitely, this last weekend when I was down in Tennessee for the safety meeting, it was warm enough. People had their uh, on going. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dennis. All right. Uh, we have uh, voices. Rosa Tosada on the line. Yes, sir. How are you? Yes. Looks like How are you? you? Uh, I'm doing well. It looks like you have a question about um, the tablet mounts. Yes, I have a magnetic, a magnetic mount in my truck. Uh, the tablet is, is very safe right there, so don't move anywhere. But my question is, the magnetic mount is approved. Is there any problem with that? or That's my question. Yeah, hey, Moses, this is Jason. 
no, absolutely. Magnetic mount would be fine. The important part is that it is mounted there, so you're able to see it uh, while you're driving to monitor your time before you have to take a break or, or be at the end of your shift or end of your driving time. So as long as you can see there, a magnet mount would work great. Okay, perfect. Yeah, thanks right. for your question. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for calling. All right, just to remind everybody, star three, uh, right now the queue is open. So if you have a question, you go ahead and be at the top of the line. Um, we'll wait a couple of minutes here and see if anyone else has questions. Um, just a reminder, we do have some safety meetings coming up here in Owensboro, Trinity, Texas, Cleveland area, and the Louisville Truck Show. So if you can't make those, like I suggested earlier in the meeting, go ahead and do driver's ID to get that taken care of before the end of March. And don't wait till the end. We still have about 200 drivers that need to get taken care of. So, all right. Well, it does not appear we have anyone else calling in. So, uh, Jason, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, always what I like to add here. Unfortunately, it's the last day of the month this time. So if you didn't have an inspection oh. due in February, today is the day. Um, so, of course, get that taken care of and get it sent in through Drive Acts with a Safety at com, so we can get you up to date. Yep. Don't wait till the end of those either. Right. <laughs> uh, and if you have one due in March, my suggestion is get it done sooner than later because you wait till the end and everyone else is doing it. And from an inspection standpoint, their lines are pretty long. Yep. at the various um, truck inspection stations, and we get uh, all of them funneling at the same time. The other thing I'd like to remind a couple of drivers is we are in the middle of plate renewals. There's probably about 20, 25 of you that we still need 2290s for, so I'll be contacting you shortly. Please make sure you get those so we get your plates renewed. Uh, we do have one more person that just came in. Oh, hold on. Michael, can you? Oh, I'm sorry. We have a call coming in here and just waiting for the screen process to come through. So, but, um, oh, 2290. So please just make sure if you haven't turned it in and you've got our plates that you go ahead and get those turned in as soon as possible so we can make sure you have a plate before the Illinois plates run out in the end of March. So, all righty. Oh, my goodness. All right. We're going to wait here for Michael to uh, come through. Maybe. <laughs> so uh, while we're waiting, just uh, I guess get some other tips here. Uh, as Dennis said, for spring driving, watch out for motorcycles. So there are other parts of the U.S. that still has winter snow. So just be mindful of weather conditions. Make sure you're doing trip planning that involves uh, looking out the weather. If the weather is so bad that you need to get off the road, please do so so that um, you're not there on hazardous condition and you lose control and put yourself in a worse situation. Find the safest close spot off the road and get parked. All right? All right. Um, hmm. I guess we're having technical issues bringing up Michael here. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let's uh, go ahead and close the meeting here since we can't evidently get this call through. So I'd like to thank everyone for joining. Oh, hold on. I guess we do. Oh, now we got people coming through. All right. Hey, April, are you with us? Yes, I am. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thank you for staying with us. That took forever to get you through the queue. What's your question? Yeah, is this Jason? This is Dale, but Jason is uh, sitting uh, beside me. I'm right here, April. Okay. How are you? I'm good. Listen, uh, it's about that call come out because, crap, I didn't know about that. But uh, we got, you know, we got Qualcomm. We do our logs on, and we're trading trucks. Our new truck will be in in end of April or sometime in May. So ours is just laying on the seat while we drive, like the passenger seat. Right. Because we didn't want to, we got the mount, but we didn't want to drill a hole in the dash so whoever buys this truck can just put it wherever they want. Right, and I, we, I completely understand that. Um, however, you might want to look into other options as far as having it mounted. 
that's kind of where oh. we're getting in a little bit of hot water is because it is laying right. on the seat or the other driver had it laying on the, his floor. Uh, he had his tablet laying right. on the floor of the truck. And uh, in both of those situations, we did receive violations for for that. Um, so I can totally understand maybe not wanting to drill a hole in there and letting somebody else drill their own holes once they purchase it from you. But uh, mm-hmm. it should be mounted in some way so it's visible to you as you're as you're driving. Okay, we got to hook our panic buttons on the dash, and there's a like a cover that goes over it so the cat can't push it. Can I bungee it to that? You think they'll have a fit about that if it was just bungeed? Um, I would say as long as it's secure enough to to not move um, and, and potentially become dislodged. Uh, from hitting a bump or a pothole uh, or anything like that while you're driving, that that it should be okay. I would probably, I feel like I would uh, recommend something maybe a little stronger than bungees. Okay, like the Velcro. There's Velcro heavy enough to hold a Qualcomm. I would say yes. Um, at home improvement stores have Velcro that uh, I think can hold up to 35 pounds. Okay. All right. Well, I thought I'd just double check. That's a new wrinkle in my brain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't know about that. Yeah, just, well, and it's just something that we've, you know, these drivers are kind of saying they didn't know either. And, and with e still being pretty new, we're, we're f- figuring out what uh, exactly what we need to do to keep the DOT happy with us. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we'll do something about it then. All right. Well, thanks for your call, April. Appreciate it. All yeah. right. Thank you, April. The, the purpose is obviously to avoid getting those type of violations. I mean, prior to going on to ELDs everywhere, I – I'd never seen a violation of that from any officer ever written. So right. It's, it's a, a new wrinkle they can uh, find for uh, people. So um, we do have another gentleman here. Uh, Ross, are you on the line? Yes, I am. How are you? Oh, not too bad. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, I've got a question. How old can a, can a rider be, like if you want to take your grandkid with you or something like that? Uh, I was actually just texting to see if I get that answer. It's either 12, okay, I thought it was 12 or 14. So that's $20 a month for the full month. Yeah, it would be 12 years of age, Ross, and then uh, $20 a month for the insurance, yep. Okay, so 12 years of age is the minimum then. Yep. Okay, then. That's all I needed. All right, well, thank you for calling. Um, Hold on, we got, uh, what do you, hold on, you're Robert? No, he's still being screened. I'm sorry. We have uh, Brandon. Hey. How are you? Hello. Brandon, how are you? I'm good. Good. How are you doing? Doing well. Um, I kind of miss some things. I'm I'm home and running around. And, okay. Um, I, I so what I call the last end of it. So we have to have it mounted on the dash or something. The tablet. Right. That's correct. Um, the tablet oh. or phone or whatever device you use. Um, it's in the regulations under 395.22G. Um, that's the one that explains it as far as uh, being within your, your line of sight. Um, but that's the one oh. that we So, yeah, it is in the regulations to have it up there. Oh, okay. Okay, because I, I have mine in the back. You know, it's not in the front. It's, you know, I have them with a the TV yet and whatever. It'd be back there. Don't move around. Oh, okay, okay. All right, I'll figure out something. Hey, hey Brandon. Yes. Congratulations on getting a clean inspection. I gave you props at the beginning of our meeting. Yeah, I did hear that. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I tell you the truth, I was scared, man. Cause, you know, I was I, I wasn't speeding or nothing, and when I saw the lights, I was scared. Like, man, what, what did I do? What was it? <laughs> He so uh, told me as soon as he got to the truck, you didn't do anything. I just want to do inspection and just uh, cleared it right up real fast. We appreciate the clean inspections. That would definitely help us out in the long run, all right? So thank you for doing yes, a good sir. job. All right. Appreciate all right. it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, next on the line, we have Robert Hardesty. Robert? Yes, sir. How are you doing? He said I was just I come in kind of late on this mounting of our ELD. I use an iPad, and I keep it in a portfolio in my door panel. I don't have mine mounted. Do I have? Am I required to mount it? 
Right. Um, yes, it is in the regulations to have it mounted. Um, it's 395.22G, um, but it, yeah, it does need to be mounted. And this is something that uh, how basically how we understood it or interpreted it uh, in the beginning was that the mounting was talking about having your HD100 box or your, your Qualcomm plugged into your ECM or into the truck to do the diagnostic part of things and to measure your driving. Um, However, with these inspections that we've been getting, uh, officers are interpreting that as your device, whether it's an iPad or your phone, needs to be mounted uh, in, your, in your cab where you're able to see it while you're driving, so you're able to check to see how much time you have left uh, before you need to take a break or stop driving. Well, I'm smart enough to know what time I started and what time the brakes have to do. I don't need the iPad telling me. Well, sure, and I don't think anybody <laughs> you know? doubts that for a second. I mean, <laughs> but, but it is the regulations that uh, that we go by, and that's what something yeah. we'll have to do. Oh, I I understand. I mean, there's just something. Yeah, I thought we, it was, the mounting part was because it was if it was loose in the truck. Mine's not loose. It's tucked in. A, it's in a portfolio. And it's tucked. It's locked away. I mean, yeah. I don't I, I, I don't use it while I'm driving. I don't look at it while I'm driving. I don't have any need to look at it while I'm driving. But, you know, and from a safety huh. standpoint, that's my thoughts, too. People did it on paper. You knew when you needed to shut down, but, you know, obviously we don't want people picking up unnecessary CSA points and hours of service, so we're oh, trying absolutely. to... Oh, absolutely. So, but uh, well, we... While we're we, talking, yeah. while we're talking, another question I had on my ELD, I tried to contact you the other day about it. I arrived back at my shipper, was inside the building, I got loaded... And when I went to go off duty, my uh, ELD wasn't responding at all. And I tried to call you and couldn't get a hold of you. I ended up rebooting it. When I rebooted it, it showed all that time that I'm sitting inside that building as driving time. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's definitely a weird thing happens there. Uh, that's not a normal or typical thing to happen. Uh, in that situation, how, did you get it fixed in any way? Well, we'll talk about that later. I'll call you in a little bit, and we'll we'll work on getting that corrected. Um, but okay. anytime, if you can't go off duty um, or something like that, you can always add it manually. But rebooting the device is always the best thing to do to try to get it going again. And I'll give you a call, and we'll get that worked out. <laughs> okay. All right. And I thanks for your question there, Robert. All right. All right. Well, that's Thank it. You. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for calling in. That's it for questions. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who called in with either questions or safety tips. Um, I'd like to thank Jeff for joining us today and talking about Camp Bennett. Uh, Jason, thank you for joining again. Uh, everyone, for me, Dale. we look forward to talking to you again next month, uh, for Wednesday in March, whatever date that will be. But we'll send out a reminder. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.